It had to be you. It had to be you. I wandered around and finally found somebody who could make me be true, might make me feel blue, or even be glad just to be sad thinking of you. Some others I've seen might never be mean, might never be cross or try to be boss, but they wouldn't do for nobody else gave me that thrill with all your faults i love you still it had to be you wonderful you it had to be you all right welcome again everyone thank you for tuning in today's video is it had to be you now some of the things i'm going to cover in this song um going to cover the chords, of course, and some of the kind of typical reharmonizations, a little bit of the theory behind those reharmonizations, also going to go into some block chords, and also I'm going to th I think I'm going to talk just a little bit about singing today. You know, I'm not a great vocalist, especially on this song. I think one of the bigger mistakes that beginning vocalists do is to hold notes out too long. Uh, many times you'll hear amateur singers kind of doing it this way. It had to be you, it had to be you. I wandered around and finally found somebody who, without taking time to breathe, uh, the song kind of seems a little bit smothered. So w one thing you want to do is just kind of put some variety there. You can hold out one note on one line, but then on the next line, you know, cut it off shorter. I wandered around and finally found somebody who. And also that gives uh, um, a little space for the accompanist to fill in a little bit and uh, not just be kind of stuck in the background all the time. And you're trying to sing in what they call a legitimate style or a legit. Some others I've seen, seen. You know, be very careful not to go, you know, not to have a lisp and go sheen. Some others I've seen, sh, you know. Make it a, a true S. Some others I've seen. Even that wasn't good. All right, let's go over some of the uh, reharmonization. One thing about this song is that it's got several spots in there where you've got like four measures of a dominant seventh chord. And you almost have to reharmonize that a little bit. So let's look at the beginning first. All right, F major. Now, one thing you can do is on the one chord, the very first chord of the song, uh, you can really kind of reharmonize this any way you want to, <laughs> anything that supports the melody note. But a real common way of doing this is to play a diminished chord. It had to be you, and then resolve it. Now let's take a look at that diminished chord. We could think of that also as an E7th with a flat nine. So it had to be you. It had to be you. This is a concept that you really should know. If you have a dominant seventh chord and it doesn't have its relative two in front of it, you can put the two there, sometimes in place of the dominant chord and then go to the dominant chord or, or ahead of the dominant chord. So, um, so right there I've got a D7 and I can put the relative two. Now that's just gonna be down four notes from a D it's gonna, and it's gonna be a minor chord. Here we've got a G7, and this one lasts for four long measures. So you go down four notes to the relative two. See, anytime you have a dominant seventh chord, it's they call it a five chord, all right? This is like a five chord in the key of C. We're not in the key of C, but this is this would be a five chord in the key of C, G7th. 
And why is it a five chord? Because if you did scale tone, seventh chords, one, two, three, four, five, the, only the fifth chord there is going to be a dominant chord. So you have a dominant chord, and you want to do some reharmonization by playing its relative two. And also, you can, before you play the relative two, you can play like a five chord before that, like an A7 to the relative two. And an even better way is to take a diminished chord, which basically is func functioning the same way, and go to the, the uh, relative two and then up to the dominant. So uh, from the top, it had to be you. It had to be you. I wandered around and finally found somebody who. So there I used the diminished to the two and then to the five. Could make me be true. And here we have a C seventh, but I could just go to its relative to, which is down four notes to the G minor. True. See, and then go to the C seventh. Might make me feel blue. And here I've got a minor chord, and, and I'm doing kind of the same trick, but not really. I'm going down to its the dominant chord that would take you to D minor. Or you could go down a half step and, and use the diminished chord instead. Same, same principle, you know, A7 to D minor, C sharp diminished to D minor. It's really the same thing. Or even be glad. And you could do it here, just to be sad. Uh, but uh, I think on the Harry Connick version, he likes to do these, these walk-ups. Some others I've seen. Now watch this. I could use the E7, but I could <laughs> and then go to F. But that's a dominant chord, so I could precede it by its two. That's going to be a B minor, and it'll support the melody note as a minor 11th. Some others I've seen. Okay. <laughs> that's kind of a fancy way to do it. Might never be mean. And this, har this uh, reharmonization was on every record recording I listened to. It's not on the chart, but it, it should be. And I think like in, it's, I put it there on the fourth beat, but you could put it on the third beat too. Uh, some others I've seen might never be mean, might never be cross or try to be boss, but they wouldn't do. And here's a pretty important chord too that I've, I've never really done this whenever I played this song, but you should put an F7 in here. Cause nobody else it takes you up to F7, will take you up to the B flat major. Cause nobody else gave me a thrill. With all your faults, I love you still. It had to be you. And they're going to the C7. Um, now that is the five chord, right? But I came to it this way with a diminished chord. And this is just so typical. It's kind of functioning as a secondary dominant. In other words, this is the dominant, but if you use a dominant chord to get to the dominant, we call that a secondary dominant. So down four notes again, you know, because that it's cycle of fifths. When I say down four notes, up five, and then down five, right? Cycle of fifths, G, C, F. So that's functioning as a G chord. And you'll, you'll see this in classical theory all the time that, you know, here, well, let's do it in F because that's the key we're in. Here's the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord. The five chord is a dominant, uh, the six chord. And then the seven chord functions a lot of times as a dominant, you see, because it kind of is the same notes. All right, so. And that's basically it for the reharm. Uh, I can't think of anything else to put in there. Um, a good thing to do on this song, Harry Connick does it, is he goes into A flat for the, uh, for the uh, chorus. And uh, one other kind of cool thing he does, uh, I'll do it in F, he does it in A flat, uh, this kind of cool melodic idea. But
gets kind of an old-fashioned sound there. Uh, another thing I probably didn't talk about and I need to is um, on the very beginning. You use this augmented chord, right? A C augmented. It had to be you. And then do it again. Like that. Like a one, five, one. And if you look at that augmented chord, you know, you can look at it as an E augmented, and that's kind of like an E seventh chord. It had to be you, you know. And that kind of relates to some of the reharm that we just covered on that. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, block voicings. Now, this is something I've just started covering recently. I've never really played much in this style, but I'm starting to like it more and more. So let's see what we can do with this. Okay, that's not good. So using the, you know, it looks like an E7, but you can think of it as a augmented chord also. Right. And you could also maybe do it this way as a G minor. And then here. Okay, first we're going up to the F, so. All right, and that this is using the principle of, uh, you know, when you're on a major chord, you, you harmonize it through the scale by doing a diminished chord on every other chord. So going down from F. All right, going down using a diminished chord, so like that. But since it's cr a chromatic thing here, you could do like that, like take an F6 chord and just use E6 there. You could do it both ways, you know. All right, now we get to a dominant chord. And I've thought long and hard about this. Um, the way uh, uh, Mark Levine or Levine uh, explains dominant chords that you should harmonize them this way with the diminished chord, every other chord like this. But I have, haven't found too many places where that really works very well. So I like to think of it like this. Think of it as an F sharp minor seven flat five chord, okay? That's the same as a D seventh really. And then if you would harmonize that, you'd kind of do it this way. And the difference here between the, like the, D, the D dominant seventh way is, is here we went to the four, like that, the fourth note of the scale D, right? And we typically would use a diminished chord there. But if you think of it this way, you get up to the flat five as a diminished chord. And then on the six, there, see, you use again a diminished chord, and it sounds really more like the typical harmony for a D seventh. And I can do it here on the G on the uh, G seventh here, but more more or less thinking of it as as a B half diminished. All right. All right. So I think that's where you need to go on the uh, dominant chords. And of course you can use, and I hate to mention this again, but you can use some box voicings too, like if you're going uh, right there, box one, there's box two, so some fill-in kind of stuff. There's the box voicing, you can do it this way too. This way, uh, well, that uh, has to be the box voicing. And you know, um, if you're in a trio, you can just sit there and let the rhythm go by. But um, if you're playing solo, switch into some open voicings once in a while just to make it sound a little more full. So that's a G minor, but it could be seventh, C seventh. And that 
that's D minor. You really need the root there, or it's going to sound like an F chord. So just thinking of the one chord as a diminished chord there, you can do something nice like this. This is a kind of a pretty old song, and it's got an old-fashioned sound to it, especially with those augmented chords. So, anytime you do that, and you go from F to C augmented and back to F, I mean, you just start thinking of a you know a bicycle built for two and an ice cream parlor and the Roaring Twenties and all that kind of stuff. It just sounds that way, like this song. Summer. That old Indian summer, it's the dream that comes after springtime's laughter. One other thing, vocally here, when you sing the line, some others I've seen, watch it, it's going to come out some mothers I've seen, if you're not careful. Some others I've seen. So put a little space in there. Some others I've seen. Or, you know, sing some mothers if you want to. Um, another way, if you want to sound like Harry, Harry Connick, just sing through your nose and never move your lips. It had to be you. It had to be you. I wandered around and finally found somebody who Great song for stride piano, and I put up a video this morning of uh, Mary Sue Taylor. She's just a wonderful piano player that lives right here in Atlanta. And I think the second song, it's an hour-long uh, video, so it's the second song, though. Check out how she does it. Um, you can learn everything you ever wanted to know about stride piano, I think, from uh, Mary Sue. Um, <laughs> If you're a beginner, I'm just going to run through some of the chords real basically here. Um, so.
there, I should have gone to a root position B flat because you're really kind of almost changing to the, what sounds like the key of B flat there. So you need to have a root position chord there. It just doesn't sound right the other way. Yeah, when you, when you move to an important kind of new harmonic kind of center, you know, here we're up to B flat. Uh, you need to put the root on the bottom. Now, if it's just a little passing chord, doesn't need the root on the bottom. Um, but, you know, important chords, first chord of the song, that kind of thing, or anytime you're moving to a new key, put the root on the bottom.